our people in Syria and Egypt are preparing for commemorating the great victory of October Liberation War. The Kremlin expresses regret that the Russian-US meeting between both countries' presidents scheduled in Indonesia will not happen. The Russian Foreign Ministry affirms that the jihadist groups fighting in Syria are linked to international terrorism. Gentlemen, this is Yerado Krikorian with the news in English. Our people in Syria and Egypt are preparing for commemorating the 40th anniversary of the October Liberation War, which is considered a luminous landmark in the history of modern Syria. On October 6, 1973, the Syrian and Egyptian armies achieved a landslide victory against the Israeli army. The victory inaugurated the dawn of a new era and created a promising turning point in the life of the Arab nation. This sweeping victory had great consequences at the local and international levels. Inspired by the sublime values and great meanings of October victory, Syrian people and army are determined to press ahead with their battle to uproot terrorism and restore security and stability to Syria. expressed regrets that the Russian-U.S. meeting between both countries' presidents, which was supposed to take place in Indonesia on October 7th, will not happen. Russia Today website quoted the Kremlin's spokesman Dmitry Peshkov as saying that Russia is familiar with the developments and hope they will be settled. He pointed out that the relations between Russia and the U.S. need a high-level dialogue, noting that there are many issues on the agenda of bilateral relations, foremost the Syrian issue. The Russian Foreign Ministry affirmed in a statement that the jihadist groups fighting in Syria are linked to international terrorism and are prepared to continue murdering and destroying not just in Syria but in other countries. The statement said that Moscow had warned of such a scenario resulting from developments in Syria, noting that extremist terrorists and the jihadist groups within the armed opposition control the majority of support provided to militants, including weapons. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif stressed Iran's readiness to continue cooperation that is aimed to reach a political solution to the crisis in Syria. Zarif called during a recent meeting with the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon upon the UN to play an essential role in settling the regional crisis, security issues and international challenges. Zarif warned during the talks, which took place on the sidelines of the 68th UN General Assembly, against the dangers of the extremist groups in Syria possessing chemical weapons, calling for collective efforts for the removal of chemical weapons. For his part, Ban stressed that Iran can play a vital and important role in solving the crisis in Syria. Russian diplomatic sources said that a chemical weapons attack in Damascus suburbs was done by a Saudi black operations team. 
Russia Today website quoted one of the sources as saying that based on data from a number of sources, a picture can be pieced together. The criminal provocation in eastern Ghouta was done by a black team that the Saudis sent to Jordan and which acted with support of the so-called Liwa al-Islam group. Meanwhile, Viktor Ivanov, the chief of the Russian Federal Drug Control Service, warns that armed groups from Syria could start infiltrating the Caucasus region. He added that Russian experts are predicting that foreign mercenaries in Syria who have been structured into paramilitary groups competing with each other will swarm toward the Caucasus. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region, and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Naiman Qassam, but after a short break.